John Patton Ford is brand new to the narrative feature world, but I think he's already left an indelible mark with Emily the Criminal in terms of style and form. And that's what I'll be talking about today, specifically how Ford used budgetary and time constraints to create an epic storytelling technique with telephoto lenses and a handheld camera. Now, this is a bit of a stretch for me because I adore the wide look of Emmanuel Lubezki and Roger Deakins. I love the way a wide lens exaggerates features and creates a level of intimacy that a normal lens can't. Everybody. Dude, I don't usually work downtown at night. I know this. But what if a story needs distance? What if the story needs to evoke a feeling of cold inevitability to work correctly? Enter the telephoto lens. Emily the Criminal is filmed almost exclusively with them. In addition to a singular focus on faces, the telephoto lens creates a sense of voyeurism in the frame. It makes it feel as if we are witnessing from a distance what is about to happen, something that feels inevitable. Of course, the audience doesn't ever have any kind of control over how the frame is filmed, but with this style of shooting, we really feel that sense of removal, of captivated powerlessness. A lot of the film is shot in profile, which keeps us further away from Emily's motivation. When a film shows eyes in a clear close-up, it's much easier to see the incentives of a character like this. Well done. But some of the most important scenes of the movie are shot in profile. Just like when Emily decides to text the number Javier gave her, we really can't see her eyes. It's unnerving in a good way. We're made to feel we don't really know what's going on in the story. It's hard to guess what's about to happen. This kind of filming perfectly encapsulates one of the major features of Aubrey Plaza, her propensity to say or do anything. She's like a deeply unsafe person. Like you don't know what she's gonna do. She makes you feel on edge in this wonderful way. She's like a disruptor, you know? Overall, telephoto lenses emphasize character over plot, which you can do when you have such an electrifying actor in Plaza. She's relatable, but not. She often says exactly what we wished we could say. This was a fantastic Liz. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. No more talking. Just leave. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, if you want to tell me what to do, put me on the fucking payroll. How about that? The handheld camera only adds to this chaos. It feels like a documentary more than a narrative feature, again contributing to the feeling of imminent danger throughout the film. We can visually barely keep up with what unfolds. A lot of this comes down to budget and time. Emily the Criminal was greenlit for $3 million for production and was shot in 20 days. When you don't have a ton of budget or time, it creates constraints. These sort of constraints demand a filmmaker to get creative in untraditional ways. Filmmaking comes down to technique and craft, and rather than going for a cheap David Fincher look, Ford embraces this by shooting handheld on long lenses, creating the look that, I think, makes Emily the Criminal an instant crime classic. <laughs> 